we did not know the way. You sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water and for water that can be found everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life that you can only give. To you be given honor, praise, and glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. All right. Well, welcome to uh, Easter. I believe we're at week five now. The season is flying right by. It is good to have you uh, all here. I know we're going to have some announcements, but let me make my big announcement. Many of you already know. Uh, I am uh, Beth and I are grandparents now for the first time. And um, uh, his name is Tally, Tally North Fisher Thiel. And he was born two weeks early at eight pounds, nine ounces, 22 inches. He's a big guy and he's doing very well. Mom is doing well. Uh, we are excited. Uh, we've had a chance to Facebook or FaceTime with them. And I have heard over the years what an exciting thing it is to uh, be a grandparent. And uh, I concur. It's quite exciting. <laughs> and, um, so we are thrilled. Um, for those who've wondered about the origins of his name, uh, June is a native Athabascan, um, and uh, some of his blood is from uh, that region. And uh, Tali is uh, is an Athabascan name. It's rare, even in their in their. Uh, it means wave. So it's uh, that's his name, and uh, it's he's a cool guy, and we're excited. And uh, yeah, so thank you for all the well wishes and prayers and stuff. And we'll just uh, one of these days we'll be able to hug him. But in the meantime, we're really excited for FaceTime and stuff like that. So that's working pretty well. Okay. Um, we are. Uh, now into the announcements. I, I know that there will be. I'm going to first. Uh, is Rob Blanchard here? Yeah, I'm here finally. Uh, Rob, uh, what are the <laughs> announcements? I'll first defer to you. Anything you want to say, and then I'll fill in. And then if anyone else has announcements, but I don't want to jump yeah, past. I don't want to get ahead of my skis here. So yeah, we got a couple of things. Um, we're going to start a, a planning team for the transition back to the pews. So if you're interested in joining that team, please reach out to myself or Dan Stickle uh, so we can get that started. Also, uh, we're looking at trying to do some, uh, some sort of education program. Um, so if you're interested in helping out with that, you can reach out to uh, Lisa as well. And uh, was there one other thing I was supposed to mention? Well, um, I think that's it. Yeah, I'll, f I'll fill in a few other points if you have anything else. I think, uh, so we are going to have a worship committee meeting uh, this uh, Friday at 10 via Zoom. And so when we look at issues of going back, we're looking at facility issues and then worship issues as well. So we're kind of just gradually starting to imagine what it may look like over time. Uh, and we will allow for a lot of feedback, a lot of input, and we're I'm definitely doing a lot of research as well. Uh, it's, it's quite a little process, uh, but uh, what I suspect it is safe to say is that we will, uh, one, continue with a Zoom worship service uh, one way or the other, probably for the rest of the year, but we'll have a second service as well, which will be a service in the sanctuary probably at our normal. So we'll figure all that out. But we'll always have, I think you'll always have two different services going on for the rest of this year. I suspect the average church in our denomination will as well. So there will be that opportunity to gather together appropriately, safely, and also for those who are not able to uh, or uncomfortable with doing so, we'll have the Zoom service as well. So 
two different types of service. Um, and we will probably live feed whatever it is that we do in the sanctuary, but uh, recognize too, there's more of an intimacy with this approach. Uh, so we'll keep that going in some way. Um, One other thing, I, I just remembered uh, the Zoom, um, we need help with hosting the Zoom oh. services. So if you're interested in helping with that, please reach out to myself or, or Dan. We're gonna start up kind of like the sound reach team. We'll have a Zoom reach team to kind of help with running and hosting these events, making sure everybody gets the uh, notice on time so that we, they can join the service and, and whatnot. So please also reach out to Dan and I for that as well. The other thing I would suggest, if you have, uh, so now we also have the Zoom Bible study every Wednesday night. At seven, we're in the book of Acts. You can jump in anytime. Uh, there, there's no requirements, uh, but uh, we're in the middle of that book. And uh, so uh, that is something If please feel free to join. We've been averaging 25 to 30 people a night, so it's been good. And uh, But in any event, the other thing I, I wanna suggest, if uh, you, as you're imagining and reimagining church with all, if, as we are doing this, um, if you have other ideas of Zoom-like gatherings that you want to explore, uh, please share them with me uh, and or Jenny, and uh, we'll kind of, you know, we'll just keep working this stuff through. So uh, if there's some specific needs along those lines, uh, feel free to, let's brainstorm together and see where it all goes. <coughs> If there are, are I have there one other announcements. Can I have one announcement. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, we have a whole list of spring grounds maintenance cleanup things to do. Um, so instead of, in the interest of maintaining social distancing and all that, instead of scheduling a day and having a bunch of people meet up there, if you're interested in volunteering for one or two tasks off our spring uh, grounds maintenance list reach out to me and we'll try to work something out and then you can kind of go up to the church and and do it at your leisure uh there's so uh yeah if you're interested in that reach out to me and we'll uh we'll try and get it all uh, orchestrated all right very good thanks dan mm -hmm. if there is nothing else now uh, let us move to prayer Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all of the world, for he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. <laughs>
All right, we'll have uh, our reading, the first reading from Acts. Filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him, and the witness laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and crowd, cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes him stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. This is uh, the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be trouble, troubled. Believe in God, also believe in me. You see, in my Father's house there are many dwelling places, and if it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may also be, and you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can you say that we know the way? And Jesus said, you see, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you will know him and you will have seen him. And then Philip said, Lord, Show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. And Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all of this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has, in fact, seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me, that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you don't, then at least believe me because of all the amazing works that we, you have seen me do. Truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I'll do it. The Gospel of the Lord. I have, uh, I've been at Transfiguration for uh, a little over seven years now, and in the course of that time, I have uh, conducted at least 25 funerals, maybe upwards of 30. Many for members, family members of members and friends and so on, but it's been about that number of funerals. I would estimate that probably half of those funerals have featured the first part of this lesson. 
the lesson that says, do not let your hearts be troubled. And of course, in funerals where we are processing and celebrating the death and the life of a loved one, it's natural for a heart to be troubled. When we lose someone dear to us through death, there is a gap, there is a hole, there is a void that is very real, and our whole reality is in some sort of a state of transition. And it's tricky, it's troubling, it's challenging, and it's, it's, it's just, it's something that we all go through, we've gone through several times, we will go through uh, as long as we uh, live on planet Earth, but the death of a loved one is never an easy matter to deal with. There's simply a lot of uncertainty. And so these words can find relevance in the midst of that experience. Now, today, when we look at this lesson in the context of the time where Jesus delivers it in the upper room on Holy Thursday, the day before he, in fact, dies, uh, he's aware of the fact that the disciples are troubled. Uh, they have been with Jesus for two or three years. They've seen what's gone on in Jerusalem over the last three or four days. They've been with Jesus as he has been preaching in the temple and shaking things up. They recognize the atmospherics of this ministry is really getting kind of thick and challenging and frightening. And they, they're trying to make sense of it all. And Jesus recognizes that they're trying to make sense of it all. Jesus has explained to them that uh, they've gone to Jerusalem and he'll probably lose his life there. The disciples have not wanted to really process this, but in, deep in their hearts, they recognize what's going on. Uh, they, they understand what's happening in Jerusalem. They understand the power that Rome has over them. And they understand that people who speak out usually get crucified. They've seen it. Uh, they've heard it. They are aware of it, and they are wondering exactly what is going to happen, and they are concerned. Their hearts are troubled. Jesus understands this about his disciples. He's naming an important issue, and he starts to set the stage for what ministry will look like in the future. Now, here we are. In 2020, a, a year of radical uncertainty, it is reasonable for all of us to feel unrest. It is reasonable for all of us to experience hearts that are somewhat troubled. That is evidence of the challenges we face, right? We are trying to find new norms, and uh, we can't have a measure of unrest in this time. Uh, we don't know what the future will exactly bring. Uh, we all come from different perspectives on what is happening and what is the right way to re-engage. And our hearts are naturally troubled. Now, some of us can handle it better than others. We are different different personality types. Uh, we process information differently. We live into this information differently. And it is a challenge. And one of the things that we need to be able to understand within the context of this challenge and problem is that not only do we have to be compassionate with ourselves in the midst of this, but we have to be compassionate with others as we begin to learn how to live into this new reality, a reality that is constantly evolving and changing. It's something we cannot control all that easily, even though we wish we could. The disciples, here they are. Their hearts are troubled. And this is where Jesus brings the good news. He says to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Know that for each of you, there is a room in my Father's house. There is a space 
a room, a mansion, a place for each of you to reside, to live, and to be fulfilled with, the God, with God's Holy Spirit as you will ultimately move this ministry forward. You will and are being empowered. And he says to his disciples, I'll tell you, I've been living in my father's house the whole time you've known me. I've never not been living with him. He has never not been living with me. I have told you I eat food you know nothing about, and I did, and I do eat food you know nothing about. It's the food from my father's house. I tell you the truth that what I have and what I have been given is freely given to you as well. The door is open, and the Lord and the Spirit is coming to you, and Jesus is setting the stage, recognizing full well he will die, he will raise again, the Holy Spirit will fill these disciples, and they will uniquely move forward in time and space to share the good news to be the hands and feet of God. But the only way they will ever really be able to effectively do this is to recognize there is a place, there is a space for them. And so, it brings us to today. Hearts that are filled with some trouble. Hearts that are filled with uncertainty. Hearts that are filled with a measure of expectation. And trying to make sense of all that is going on. Jesus is saying to us today, you too, my brothers and sisters, you too, my friends, you too, my disciples, have a place. There is a place in my Father's house that is prepared for you right now, and you may reside in that holy space. You may let God abide in you, and you may live in God. That is entirely within the realm of possibility. It is, of course, a choice. And it is recognizing the door goes both ways. We may walk into that space sometimes, and we may walk right back out. It's not perfect. But we have access to that kingdom experience. And that, my friends, is pretty good news. And I will tell you, as I watch what is happening in this congregation throughout this period of challenge, what I see in the people is certainly hearts that are troubled, difficult times, good times, all kinds of times, but what I do see is a spirit of love that transcends the normal human experience wafing through this congregation. I see people caring for each other in all kinds of amazing ways. And, and, and this ministry, while it seems a little contained right now, it continues to reach out as well. This ministry the ministry that you have been given, the ministry that you have been empowered with, is very much alive and well, and it's growing, and that energy and that light and that faith is starting to flow in unique ways. And we won't fully understand where it goes, but we can trust that we have access to that light and to that love. I look at what's happening, uh, and I am always surprised. Uh, I look at what's happening right now with Pathways. Uh, you know, we're going to people are gathering together to to deliver a, a lunch for the uh, workers at Fenton Healthcare in the midst of the pandem pandemic. Uh, we we've got people, that, all kinds of things going on. Uh, too much to, to mention right now, but that's just top of mind. I, um, I am grateful to each of you because you inspire me to do what I do. Every day I hear something else and from you, uh, and that is a good thing. So the good news today is we are alive and well. The Holy Spirit is with us, and we can continue to celebrate every day of this Easter season, recognizing and declaring that Christ is risen. Amen.
Let us boldly proclaim what we believe. We believe in one we believe God, in one God, God the Father, Father, the Almighty, the Almighty maker of heaven, maker and earth, heaven and earth, of all that of is all seen that is and seen unseen. And we, we believe in one believe Lord, in Jesus, one Lord Christ, Jesus Christ, the only the Son God. of the Father, eternally begotten of the Father, Father God from God, 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 light from light, light, from light true, true God, God from true God, God begotten, God, not made, God, of one God, being God. with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <coughs> All right, we can be unmuted again. Uh, now is the time uh, for choice and concerns. Do we have a... I have, I have a very different and Somebody wonderful with experience I want to share with everyone. Um, yesterday morning, I got up. It was not quite light. Uh, and I went into the kitchen and looked out the window, and there was a deer walking around. And every time we see a deer, we get excited because it's it's really cool to watch them. And um, then I looked, and there was another deer lying down. And that's, we've seen them do that, like uh, 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 even in our own yard, they'll lay down, and then all of a sudden they'll all get up and go away. And so I saw this deer laying, sitting, or laying down. And the deer that was walking around took off. And that deer didn't get up. So I watched for a while, and yeah, it was still there. So when I came back, it was about an hour later, there was a little fawn. <laughs> and the mother was cleaning up the fawn. And was, I can't tell you how joyful that made me. Mm. With all that's going around, how this lifted me up. And Stan came over and we watched and watched all morning. And I was, the dear little fawn would get up and her legs would be all wobbly and she'd be falling down. It was really sweet. And so I kind of wanted to see when they would eventually walk away. And I went off to another room and uh, pretty soon Stan says the deers are gone, but he didn't see them. He didn't see them go away. But it was just an mm. experience I never thought mm. I'd ever have. And so we know God is still out there and doing his business and taking care of things. And we'll get through all this, too. So That's a good story. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah, Tom Metz and I were talking the other day. Uh, you know, we both, you know, there's a lot of deer around where we all live and as uh, we're saying, God, okay, man, we haven't seen these deer in a while, but then we realize it's mating season and whatnot. So here we go again. It's pretty exciting. That's great. Great story. Thank you. Are there are there uh, other? Uh, uh, yes, Kelly. Yeah, I just wanted to, to bring up that um, I know uh, Penny Foss is going to be having a a, a surgical procedure on <laughs> it's Thursday, which. I'm not sure it's the 13th or 14th. I think it's the 13th. Um, anyway, um, she's going to be having a watchman put in, um, I think, to help her AFib situation. And she'll be staying overnight in the hospital till Friday. Friday. Yeah. So just wanted to let, to let everyone know for prayers for Penny and for her family taking care of her at this time. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. We, yeah. will keep we have yeah. a joy and a concern. Uh, we have a joy and concern at the same time. We are going to. Alyssa is going to have her baby on 
Thursday. Thursday. Sorry. Uh, just a prayer for her and everything goes goes all right. And the concern also is that we're watching her boys for six days. So we need <laughs> prayers. <laughs> You're going to experience the fullness of grandparents. Oh boy, oh boy. I got I got a lot of duct tape ready for him. That sandbox all set to go now. You got the sandbox is ready to go. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Good luck, Liz. We'll keep you in our prayers. Um I have a couple of concerns. one is that health healthcare as Pastor mentioned earlier, we're going to provide them with uh, lunch on the 15th, I guess that's uh, for the healthcare workers that uh, we're going through Mancino's, and they were the only ones who would actually go. So, uh, anyway, we'll set it up, and between her and I, we'll uh, finish the arrangements. Uh, tell you how hard those people are working over there and maybe I'd told that on their side. And I also want to make a prayer request for uh, a kind of a sudden member of ours, uh, Pat Robertson. Um, mm. She's having a hard time and a few of us are together with her and so uh, prayers for her as well please. Thank you Sandy. We have other if if there are no other prayer requests why don't we lift all of this to the prayers of the church sandy church the world and all who are in need Build us up, Mother and God, as living stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen your church as it is sent forth to proclaim your love. We pray especially for new congregations and those in redevelopment. Lord, in your mercy, receive, receive our, prayer. our prayer. Humble us, Creator God, as part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the world you have made, including volcanoes, ocean currents, tropical rainstorms, glaciers, and other forces that both destroy and create. Lord, in your mercy. Receive, receive our prayer. prayer. Humble us, Creator God, for your creation. Align your ways to your love, O oh God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our prayer. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress and carry their burdens. We pray for all those we have named aloud and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Receive, receive our prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children, for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents, for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care and we remember all for whom this day is difficult, God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Receive our prayer. Generous God, you call into your brilliant light all who have died. Give us faith to take hold of the promise of your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Receive, receive our prayer. prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. And so now we will uh, move on to uh, Holy Communion. I invite you to have uh, ready your the elements uh, if you choose to participate if you choose not to just 
prayerfully reflect on the words and know that Christ is always present uh, in each of our lives. And so we will now um, reflect. Uh, on the night our Lord was betrayed, he gathered his disciples in an upper room. He took bread and he broke it. He gave it to them saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. And then he took the cup and he said, this cup is my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. And do this and remember me. We know that with the cup and with the bread, we draw closer to Jesus Christ. And so together, let us pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now I invite you to take the bread and to eat. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And now take the cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. And Sandy, uh, if you want to offer the... Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word, and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gift of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life and fill you with hope and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Okay. And one more.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord.